And what did I tell you? And you, just, and and you just slammed me on the ground because I was trying to record. What are, you, what are you rolling me on the ground for? Welcome to US Corrupt Cops. In this video, we uncover two shocking cases of corrupt cops who were fired and immediately sued. Hit like, share, and comment to let us know your thoughts. If you like this video, press 1. On July 4th, 2024, in Oklahoma, John takes a walk every morning around 6 gray a.m. With his six-year-old autistic son, they set out like any other morning. But shortly into their sunrise adventure, they were approached by an officer from the Wanga Police Department. Hey, how are you doing today? Yeah, where are you heading off to? Just walking. Uh, any specific location? Oh, okay. Is this your son? Yes. All right. Hey, what's your name? You can tell him your name. Yeah. John's son might be a loyal member of the Lack family, as even at six years old, he knows not to talk to strangers or the police. After he refuses to identify himself, a second officer arrives on the scene to ensure that the boy never trusts a stranger again. Johnny. Johnny. All right. All right, Johnny, where you come from? I'm just walking around. Just walking around? Yeah. All right, enjoying this weather? Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, uh, we're just checking up on you, man. What? You know? I'm just walking around. What in the heck is this deal? Yeah. Uh, I found it a little bit suspicious, you know, so uh, just, just the walking around. Walking around is yes. a little bit suspicious? Uh, I mean... Actually... Go ahead. Technically, not really, but I mean, it's pretty early in the morning. Just wondering what was going yeah, that's on. That's what we do. We walk, get up early. And you got your ID on you? What do I need an ID for? Because I just asked you for it. I don't need that to show my ID. Okay. If you don't give me your ID, I'm going to take you to jail for failure to identify because I've identified that you've been walking around down here at 5 30 in the morning. Yeah, we do that. No, you're not. Give me your ID. I don't have my ID on me because it's at the house. What's your name and date of birth? Huh? What's your name and date of birth? I don't know, but you can't run. I don't have. This is a state where I don't have to show my hey, ID. Turn around. You're going to do this in front of my son? Yeah, turn around. Are you serious? Yeah. Turn this around. This is my son. Let me bring my son home first. No. Turn around now. Bro, you need to, Here, let me videotape this real quick. I want this on video. What are you doing to my son? Bro, this is f***ed up. Son, it's okay, okay? It's okay. Bro, I promise you you're going to pay for this. You think? Yeah, I promise you that. We're walking around, there's nothing suspicious, I've done nothing criminal, I don't have my ID on me, I told you that. Tell you. And you, just, that. And you just slammed me on the ground because I was trying to record. What are, you, what are you rolling me on the ground for? Dude, this is ridiculous. Man, look at you doing to my f***ing son. There's my phone right there too. Dude, I can't even believe you're doing this to my son because he's walking around. On 4th of July. It's going to be okay. <laughs> Have a seat and I'll talk to you. I'm not I'm not gonna hurt you. All right. Look, don't worry about that. Hey buddy, come here. Are you okay? Listen to me. Are you okay? Hey, quit crying. It's gonna be okay. People that don't wanna identify, typically involved in criminal activity. I've known this individual to be involved in thefts in the city of Kent. There has been no criminal activity. Okay, listen to me. Bro, we were just walking and when okay. he came up, can you, can you, uh, no, no, you didn't hear what he said. Shut up and listen to me. You. No, shut up and okay. listen to okay. So I saw y'all walk down the alley behind the I saw y'all when I was headed into the office. Walk down, walk across the street. Yes, sir. Then I got my unit ready. I'll get my unit ready, man. I see y'all back in the alley you left from, okay? We will always walk from that alley around. It's okay. Our house is around that. Is that why we do that? I promise. We do it every morning. I'm okay. surprised you haven't so seen here, it. So here's the thing. That's fine and dandy, man. But listen, we have people that are going down, up and down these alleys, spray painting and tearing shit up. Yes, sir. I understand. Okay? That. It's the 4th of July, man. Hey, do you watch a lot of Ninja Turtles? No, I want, I want my dad. Yeah, he's right there. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but okay, if he no, would have no, came up and saw something like, hey, hey, but he just goes, hey. I've been called for, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, investigation okay. of something. I'm like, what? Yeah, okay, so here's the deal, though. Listen, when I got there, 
I didn't play games with you. I asked you what y'all were doing. You said, okay. Well, I've worked here. Yeah, uh, then that's fine, dude. Huh? I love it that you're out with your kid. But it is a little odd, okay? So when I ask you for your ID, you say, I don't have any ID. So what's your name and date of birth? <laughs> that's all you have to give me. Give me your name and date of birth. What is your name and date of birth? I know, but this is because... No, I no, this is your last opportunity. Oh, you're asking me right yeah. now? I thought what you were is saying... Your... Uh, my, my name is John Sexton, 1230-86. Okay, set time. 1230-86. I didn't even have my radio on. <laughs> That's crazy, man. Listen, man, as long as you don't have, a, like, a bad warrant, I don't want to take you to jail. I don't like taking people to jail. I don't like doing what I had to do to you in front of your kid. But you caused it. All you had to do was provide the information asked. We had, we had, re no, no, listen, shut up and listen just a minute. We had reasonable enough suspicion to identify you. That's all that matters. But if I don't turn a to you. Yeah. But I didn't do no criminal activity. Yeah. No, I didn't. I we, didn't do nothing criminal walking with my son. Okay. It's not criminal, but we still have reasonable enough suspicion to identify you. And if I want to give the ID, I can. No, it's not a if. if the state is not an if you want to state. It's, not a, it's a state that, you, that they can ID you at any time? It's not a, this is not a shall ID state, but once you're being detained. And what was I being detained for? Criminal, like we don't know what's going on, but we can call it criminal activity. That's not, but I didn't do criminal activity for that. Okay, man. I'm thrown down like that in front of my son. I didn't even throw you down, if you want to know the truth. You did. And no. You rolled me on the ground, sir. I rolled you on the ground two times. I just making sure you don't have any weapons in there, bro. No, that was just a little overdue when a kid right there. It's all I'm saying. Well, do you, don't you think maybe next time a cop says, hey, what's your name? I have my ID, though. That's what I'm telling you. I don't have it on me. That's, but I did ask you what your name and date of birth is. I'm not going to sit here and argue with you about it, Mr. Sexton. Here's the thing, man. Typically, when a cop's out with somebody and they don't want to identify, it leads us to believe that you are involved in more criminal activity than we need to. So that's why you heard me saying what I was saying, because I'm narrating for the camera. I'm not. This is not my first day on the job, okay? And I'm going to tell you right now, man, I'm straight up with people. If I tell you to do something, you better be doing it. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense, but... Uh, hey, me, you know what? I'm maybe maybe, maybe teach me. have to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, I just you thought just, my son being there, it wasn't the right time to do all this shit. Yeah, well, you know what, man? At 5.30 in the morning? Bro, I get up 4 o'clock every morning. No, it's and cool, man. 4 o'clock at night, I yeah, get up at 4 o'clock. But, but put yourself in our position. We have a... we Our job is to make certain that shit's not going on down here. We see all the spray painting. So I literally saw y'all cross yeah, right here at Prouty. Indians around here running around doing that bull. I got you, bro. It's got possible warrant. So when I, when I was headed in, I saw him walk down the alley mm -hmm. and then when I move my truck around to the covered stuff you know you can park right there if you want right yeah, yeah you can man when I move my truck back around there like I turned so this is Prouty they were already walking out of the alley of Noble mm -hmm. they walked and then they just turned around and he went right back into the same alley he came from and he was hanging around on the oh It'd be like 101, 102, or something like that. I have to go back and look at the address. But he's hanging around back there where they cook all that barbecue and stuff. So that's why we're making contact with him. Yeah. When people don't want to identify, typically there's something else going on. You know what I mean? Yeah. For some anti American reason, this untrained officer believes it's his right to stop and identify anyone who decides to take a walk at 5 30 a.m. with no other justification. The officer pushes himself up using Johnny's back deliberately pressing the gravel into his sternum. The officer who assaulted John is now checking him for warrants. The unlawful invasion of John's privacy and blatant violation of his Fourth Amendment rights revealed that he had warrants for unpaid tickets, which do not justify an arrest. A third instance of excessive use of tax dollars now emerges as the father walks with his son. Too early for this Huh? Yeah. He didn't want to identify. He got his ass tripped up, put on the ground. He's doing. So when I came in, you know, I come from the north. I see him cross this street, Prouty, in the alley way. He's walking down. When I turn to go put my stuff up, they don't come out at Noble. I get my stuff to go and I move my pickup around back and they're hanging around like the back over there. You know where the bar, like where TGC is and stuff? Yeah.
hanging around over there. I don't know what they're doing. So Joaquin finds him. Joaquin stops him. He's like, I don't have to tell y'all anything. I said, dude, he's like, you're being detained. You know, hold on. Mm-hmm. I said, what is, you give me your ID. He's like, I ain't giving you my ID. I don't give you shit. I don't have it. I said, okay, what's your name and date of birth? And he said, I don't have to tell you shit. Mm-hmm. Something like that. So I said, all right, go ahead, turn around, put your hands behind your back. I'll, I'll take you in for a failure identify. Like, you're being detained. He's like, I don't know. I was fixing to tell Joaquin. Like, you know, if we can kind of get a situation where we can go over there to TGC and see what's going on and make sure nothing's out of the ordinary. Mm-hmm. He's like, we're just not walking, man. We, just, we, we walk every day. Okay, that's cool. But how much crap goes on in these alleys, Jared? You got right. Yeah, I mean. So, uh, he wouldn't turn around and put his hands on his back. Mm-hmm. So, he got the old jerk, kick, kick your feet up from underneath you right in front of his kid. Mm-hmm. I hate to be that way. Fourth of July, you know what I mean? I mean, why is he out this spot one of his kids? He says he gets up every morning at four and walks around. You ever seen him? No. Me neither. No, and I call out. I call out those times. Yeah. I'm perfectly right now. I don't think I'm out of scope of my job, do you? No. I mean, we've uh, literally we've been told to extra tool because of issues in the alley. So now we're checking out somebody that's in the yeah. same fucking alley. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we've had some break in. We've got graffiti. We've got some drug stuff. Eventually, John and his son are set free, and since the incident was made public, it was sent to be reviewed by the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigations. It's been nearly a month, but the state agency still hasn't figured out that what the officers did would amount to aggravated assault and battery if a non-state employee had committed the offense. Because of this, it's unclear whether the officers will face charges or internal discipline. However, The Blaine County Sheriff recently demanded that the officers be suspended. The agencies involved have since received hundreds, if not thousands, of complaints, most of which have likely been trashed or deleted without being read. KOC5 was the first to report on this and claims to have the officers' names, but for some reason, they won't reveal them unless criminal charges are brought against them. This statement makes James Madison Audit's recent video even more compelling. The arresting officer appears to not be wearing a name tag, but we can at least tell you that the other officer's name is Montoya. Pink Camera Magic was kind enough to direct me to where I could find these full videos, as the Wanga Police Department has completely ignored my requests for records so far. On August 8, 2024, Officer Joseph Harris, also known as Tucker, from the Jonesboro Police Department, was involved in an incident outside the Midnight Rodeo nightclub in Jonesboro, Arkansas. A video of the event shows the encounter, though further details about the nature of the incident are not provided. Hey, why are you arresting It's nobody's business. It's our business. No, it ain't. You want to go to jail? No, we don't want to go Okay, because he's 18 years old. Are you his mom or daddy? Nope. Any of y'all? No, no, no he's doing it ain't your business. It don't matter. He's over 18. Okay, he's a big boy. Why are they taking him right now? He's a big boy. None of your business. Why are they taking him right now? He's a friend. None of your business. What is he None of your business. What is he We want to know what he did. We want to know what he did. We want to know why. So we can't know what happened? What? Why is he headed right now? We wonder why. So, right, so, so, right, so we can't know what happened? What? Why is he, Where's he headed right now? In this scenario, a young man was arrested after questioning Officer Harris about the situation. Despite Harris stating that the question was not the young man's business, he was forcibly subdued and arrested by the officer. Harris's report claims he had to shift his focus from the first arrestee because of the young man's loudness. However, Video evidence contradicts this, showing the first arrestee was complying and being led to a patrol car without any issues. The report goes on to state that he repeatedly told Nick it was none of his business and that he needed to walk away. The first part of his statement is incorrect, and upon further review, the second part is a lie. At no point in the video before the arrest was Nick told to leave the scene. The officer further exaggerated his report by claiming that the entire time he was yelling at Nick, he had to take his eyes off a guy who was no longer there, and that a crowd was now forming. However, the reason they were there in the first place was because the crowd had already formed. He then writes that he informed Nick to place his hands behind his back, and that when he grabbed Nick, Nick tried to pull away, so he took him to the ground. 
We want to know what he did. We want to know why. So we can't know what happened? What? Why is he headed right now? However, when viewed frame by frame, it's clear that Nick's arms are limp and at his sides, with his movements being forced by Officer Harris. Nick didn't resist arrest, but even if he had, what exactly was he being arrested for? Officer Harris continues his false account, claiming that Nick refused to put his hands behind his back, even though the officers weren't applying pressure to Nick's arms. In the video, we can hear Nick telling the officers, who appear to weigh hundreds of pounds more than the small framed man, that he couldn't comply because Harris had straddled him, grinding his face into the pavement while Officer Trout controlled his other arm and pushed his weight onto Nick's back. Okay. Officer Harris was involved in an incident where he used force on Nick, who was charged with public intoxication, resisting arrest, and disorderly conduct. The incident was captured on video and went viral on social media, prompting the department to issue a statement and launch an investigation. During the investigation, Harris was placed on paid leave and later faced a 22-hour unpaid suspension for failing to activate his body cam. He was also required to undergo further training. Despite this, no charges were filed against Harris for his actions, and Nick's charges were eventually dropped. Harris was later commended for a narcotics bust, and Officer Faith Jen Kovac, now Officer Hellman, who was reportedly involved in a previous controversial video, was seen alongside him. What's your name? Let me explain it. If I have to ask you again, you're going to go for obstruction. So, man, you going to ID yourself or, or are you going to go to jail? Which one? What happened? I've already explained it to you twice. So, last do. opportunity before we take you out of the car and put you in cuffs. My name's Sid. Hey, hey, stay in the vehicle. My name's Sid, so what? Oh, what's your, what's your last name? I just told you my name, Sid. Hang it out. just told you my name. Hey. I you're gonna get my name is Cedric. Put it behind your back. I you're just told you my name. I'm not gonna tell you again. Roll over. <laughs> Roll over. Hey. Hey. Roll over. I just Watch told you. Hold on. You ass. Ah. Get them, get them, get them. We got both. What these officers don't know is that Washington has a metal rod in his leg, which was placed there after he suffered a car accident and had his leg reconstructed at the hospital in Memphis. At the end of the day, is what I tell people. Comply now and complain later. If you think, if you're on a stop or in a situation when you're dealing with the police and you think it's inappropriate, comply with the officer, and then we have a complaint process. After bonding out of jail, he was taken to NEA Baptist, where he was hospitalized for three days. And in this case, despite multiple officers being on the scene, it appears that only one was punished, the lead officer. The department is ignoring the fact that all the other officers were present and failed to intervene. This is similar to the next incident, which people have been emailing me about all weekend, saying it's the same Officer Harris from the first story. He now makes his second and likely final appearance on the show. This is Billy Corum. Corum was initially taken to St. Bernard's Medical Center on Thursday after claiming he had swallowed drugs. He reportedly left the hospital while awaiting transport to another state on felony escape charges. Officers later found Corum nearby and took him back to the detention center. During that transport, Billy begged the officers to return him to the hospital, alleging that he had swallowed narcotics. I swear to God, on my daughter's life, I've got sitting on the side of me, and they're trying to send me back to the jail where they're gonna let me die. I don't give a fuck what I'm telling you. No, I'm saying I don't give a fuck what the hospital does. Okay, cool. Whatever. I don't know what else you want me to do. Sir, will you please listen to me? I have got inside of me last night i swallowed it's in aluminum foil wrapped up it's in a baggie it's in aluminum foil individually wrapped wrapped up in aluminum foil i swallowed it yesterday look they x-rayed me last night the x-ray listen please listen to me the x-ray machine the screen i could see the screen when he did the x-ray i seen the package clearly right there he tried to he's coming there he said there, well we didn't find nothing inside you I said, boy, I seen it on the screen myself. I said, can you bring the image in here and show it to me? He said, nah. He said, I didn't send it out. 
So he took another one. This time they turned the screen away from me. Just come back and said the same. Shit. I kept telling every nurse, every nurse to come by. I was like, I got on side, I got on side, I got on side. They wouldn't listen. They wouldn't listen to me. Finally, I got a doctor in there, and I made her show me the screen, and I showed it to her. They moved me to ICU. I have not went to the bathroom since. I have not went to the bathroom. Period. I've got on side of me. I've been telling everybody, and nobody's listening to me. Why are you listening to me? Are y'all trying to kill me? Then why don't y'all listen to me? But you don't care. Huh? Not really, You don't believe me? No. All my daughter's life, I've got one daughter. She's 17 years old and she fing hates my goddamn guts. All my daughter's life, and the only thing I love in this fing world is her. I've got on the side of me. On this camera, I've got fing on the side of me, so when I fing die in the jail, it's y'all's fault. Huh? What'd you say? Okay. Y'all are pieces. <laughs> Why don't you believe me? Dude, I'm not lying to you. But you don't give a f That's what you're saying. So you're gonna put me in jail and you don't give a f that I'm telling you this and you're gonna let me die in jail. Huh? You gonna do the wreck and kill me? Huh? What? You were doing the speed limit? I As the officers begin driving, Billy pleads with them to turn back. It's likely that the officers thought Billy's pleas were just an attempt to return to the ICU so he could try to escape again, or they simply didn't care either way. Let me know how you feel about this in the comments below. A moment later, Officer Harris floors it. But the next moments with Billy will have to be blurred to satisfy the YouTube gods. Officer Harris then stopped the cruiser as inmates are not allowed to harm themselves. Only officers are permitted to do that. Harris immediately punches Billy four times, followed by two downward elbow strikes and four more lateral elbow strikes before removing the seatbelt. A second officer appears behind Harris about halfway through the brutal assault, but does nothing. John, John, John. Uh. Yeah. You alright? Billy, you alright? In this scenario, a paramedic recalls using progressively aggressive tools to assess if someone is faking unconsciousness, ending with a painful method known as the sternal rub. This method, involving pressing a knuckle into the chest bone, is effective but causes visible injuries and is deemed cruel and unusual punishment. The narrative then shifts to an incident involving Officer Harris, who allegedly abused Billy Corm by slamming a door on his head and speeding around to cause discomfort. Despite the severity of the misconduct, Officer Harris was only terminated from his position without criminal charges, while Corm was charged for attempting to escape. The disparity in how justice was applied highlights perceived inconsistencies and unfairness in the legal system, and the chief's and mayor's statements are criticized as insincere. 
On August 13, 2023, Officer Jonathan Cedo and Officer Miguel Estrada from the Lordsburg Police Department were on patrol duty. They noticed a vehicle exceeding the speed limit and initiated what seemed like a routine traffic stop following protocol. However, it quickly became apparent that the encounter was anything but ordinary. The driver, Brandon Manuel Chacon, was soon to face two oppressive officers. You want to stand right here by the front tire, brother? Right here by the side here, so it's out of the roadway. So, uh, let's see. So I'm Sergeant Estrada with the Warden Police Department, right? So what's, what's the reason for the speed today, brother? Just cruising? Just going home, nothing. Okay. Where's, where's home for you? Uh, I live in Texas. I'm sure you Texas, Texas in the El Paso? Or? Okay. How long have you been living there? Your whole life? Or? Yeah. Where are you coming from today? Uh, I was in California. California? How was that? It's great. Yeah? How was the weather? It's cool, man. How, how long were you over there in California? Uh, about four days. Four days? Yeah. Okay. Um, and the reasons? Fine. Just to go hang out? Yeah. Okay. Let me see the title of the road. Do you have family over there, or just you going over there by yourself? Okay. So I know my, my officer is talking to you, brother. Um, is this the first time being pulled over, or have you been pulled over before? No? Okay. Okay. And with your speed, you did you know that did you know it was 55 to there? Because you were an 80. I, I, I thought it was 65, if anything. Okay. I, I don't want to, like, be crazy with anything. Just, no, I understand. I it's just, just you were just kind of just cruising and coasting? Yeah, I'm just... Okay. So, what's, uh, what's the reason why you came this route? Uh, it was faster than my phone. So. Oh, your GPS? You yeah. put it on your GPS? Okay. Officer Cedo advises Mr. Chacon that he seems overly nervous, while this reaction might be expected given that it's Mr. Chacon's initial traffic stop, it's important to mention that law enforcement officers have the authority to ask a driver to step out of their vehicle based on reasonable suspicion, even without probable cause. However, a significant event unfolds when Mr. Shaken is escorted to Officer Estrada's vehicle, where he undergoes persistent questioning. Of particular significance is Officer Estrada's inquiry into the rationale behind Mr. Chacon's choice of route. It's crucial to take note of this detail as we continue to monitor the situation. And what's your weight, do you think? I don't know. I don't know your weight right now? Well, I haven't weighed myself in a while. About 180 maybe? Just put that? Or 200? 200? Have you, did you go to school for anything or? I'm just having a conversation, that's all. Like, did you go to any training for anything, or like school, college, anything? I'm just, like I said, I'm just having a conversation, man. I'm just trying to fill this out and talk to you. You're good, we're just a simple conversation, right, man? That's all it is, dude. What's up? As observed in the footage, when Officer Estrada's attempts to find something to give him probable cause to detain him fail, he insists that it's just a casual conversation. 
However, it's important to note that there's no such thing as a casual conversation in a law enforcement encounter. It typically amounts to an interrogation. According to the Law Journal, some courts argue that officers can only justify questioning beyond the original reason for the stop if there's reasonable suspicion of separate criminal activity. Other courts suggest that officers may ask unrelated questions as long as they don't prolong the stop. The crux of the issue seems to revolve around the duration of the detention for some courts, while others take a strict stance and prohibit such questioning altogether. Now given that the officer is purposefully taking longer than necessary to complete paperwork and that his questioning isn't pertinent to the initial reason for the stop, this clearly violates Mr. Chan's civil rights, but the situation doesn't stop there. The officers shamelessly continue to abuse their authority as you'll soon witness. I understand. Um, so with that, with that man, um, that's, I, have a, I have a couple quick questions. You didn't have anybody with you while traveling, no? no okay. Man. And so you said your phone told you to come this way? Okay. So as far as talking with you a little bit further, man, like my officer stated, I mean, you, you seem like you're kind of nervous, okay? And like I said, I think it could be because of the, the reason because you got pulled over by the police and you'd never been pulled over before, right? Like you said. So that's, that's one reason, you know, but to the point where normal people that get pulled over by the police, they are nervous, but not extremely nervous, like you seem. No? Okay. No, I understand. And so that's, like I said, you're not, you're just speeding. That's all it is. But the thing is, though, is that as far as police work goes and investigations, we do deal with a lot of different things on, side, you know, on the side of the road and stuff, and then people are doing things that they're not supposed to. Okay. So I'm going to ask you straight up, man. Inside your vehicle, Okay, is I have there nothing in there? Okay. I, I don't have anything. I understand, but just this, I gotta ask, man, just because of for investigation okay, purposes. We'll, 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 yeah. You don't have any large amounts of money in there, like more than ten thousand or like that crazy? No. Okay. You don't have any weapons or anything like that? No uh, grenades, bombs, no. rocket launcher, anything crazy? Uh, I'm just <laughs> yeah. So there's no like firearms or anything in there, no knives or anything that you, you know? I, like a pocket knife, maybe? I have a knife. Okay, that's cool. It's not on your person, though? No, you don't have to just... You're good. Okay, so now, like, he explained, any narcotics. So as far as you have any marijuana in the vehicle, you don't have any cocaine in the vehicle, no methamphetamines, um, heroin, no, you don't have any fentanyl pills or any... No, no prescription meds that you're not supposed to have. Do you have any prescription meds in there? Okay. So, as far as, with that being said, man, I gotta ask, uh, with you knowing 100% that there's nothing illegal inside your vehicle, do you give my officer consent to search the vehicle? I don't. No? I'm, I'm being serious, there's nothing in there. Okay. No, and I understand, I mean, that, like that's I said, all. I mean, it, that's all. I'm not sitting here saying that you're possibly lying, but the thing is, though, is that if I believed everybody on the street, I wouldn't be really good at my job, would I? So, the thing is, though, is that, um, huh? Yeah, there's nothing there. Okay. So, I mean, if I were to have a canine, if I were to have a canine come to our location and smell your car, I mean, it, it can I mean, smell majority of everything. I don't think you would need to do that. I mean, that's, that's going to be on, yeah, my, on my decision, I but. I don't have anything. Okay. So, that's, that's where we're at, man, is if I were to call a canine, which I think I'm going to do, if he were to come and hit on your vehicle, is there any reason it should hit on your vehicle if it does? Uh, I don't think so, no. No, there's no, like I said, I mean, if you have, I mean, marijuana, if you do have marijuana, it's legal here in New Mexico. I know. And the majority of the, all the states. I, I don't, I don't have nothing in there, so I don't, okay. Yeah, so I mean, that's what, that's what we'll do, is we're going to call for a canine. Um, when it comes to the location, we'll see if it does indicate anything on your vehicle if it doesn't then hey. in an absurd effort to escalate the situation the officer alleges suspicion that mr chakin has legal narcotics in his vehicle a claim entirely unfounded and essentially revealing the officer's abuse of power it's worth noting that the officer's decision to call for a k-9 unit might adhere to the guidelines outlined in dps new mexico section 3a2 which allows for the use of a k-9 during a valid vehicle stop 
if there is suspicion of illegal substances. However, it's crucial to acknowledge that the officer lacks valid reasonable suspicion. According to the same document, reasonable suspicion entails individualized suspicion that the individual may have committed a crime. It is more than a mere hunch, which is precisely what the officer has in this instance. There are no observable signs such as sweating, anger, slurred speech, reckless driving, dilated pupils, or red eyes in Mr. Chakan that could justify reasonable suspicion. It's a lot of police work. I've been doing this for almost 10 years, brother, and the way you've been giving off the indicators, it kind of shows me a little bit of red flags. Like what? Well, the nervousness. Well, the nervousness is one. I mean, you're always really afraid. And I get it. Uh, we, like we said, it could be just because you, you got pulled over. Yeah. But like I said, we, we've done this for a while where we know something's up. And I'm not saying something's up with you, okay? But since you gave us, you didn't give us verbal consent to, uh, to search your vehicle, of guess what? Not, we, because yeah. it's my, it's my, that's, and it's that's my, that's it's my, and that's right. And we're not here, we're not here to, we're not here to violate any of your rights. It's important to note that when asked about Mr. Yakin's behavior, the officer only mentioned nervousness, which aligns exactly with what the DPS would consider a mere suspicion. Furthermore, the officers claim they called the canine unit simply because Mr. Chakon didn't verbally consent to a vehicle search. This clearly indicates that the officers lacked valid reasons to search the vehicle and were attempting to violate Mr. Chan's Fourth Amendment rights which protect people from unreasonable searches and seizures without probable cause and a warrant. This constitutional right gives him the power to deny law enforcement officers permission to search his vehicle. We're not here to, we're not here to violate any of your rights, yeah, I, but I think as long as reasonable like, suspicion as far as but, that, but that's being me, for. Are you keeping me detained here then? Until the dog comes? Yes, because now I have reasonable suspicion that for something what? might be well, in there. What's the reasonable suspicion? That there might be narcotics inside the vehicle. Or we'll give it that. Just your behaviors. But that doesn't really... There's a known traffic, uh, there's a known route traffic. that, there's a known route that people Just, take with narcotics. It's a, it's a US, this run, it's a US route. I-10, I mean, everybody can travel a, on the it's, roadways. It's a US route, though. It's Definitely. A, and it's, it's, a, it's a highway. And you are correct. So, I mean, it's I pull over people every day on this, on this highway, on that highway. But I don't believe your so. concern is... Valid though, sir. I and just that's something home. that you can probably bring up in court if there is something inside the vehicle. But there is nothing in the vehicle. And I don't know that. But you don't have to know that because there's nothing in there. And I understand. But the thing is, though, is I don't know you. You don't. I don't know. I don't know you don't know me. The thing is, though, is I'm doing an investigation at this time because of the indicators that I'm going to receive. That's all I'm talking. But I don't believe I have to stay here. Please. You could. You're free to leave, but the vehicle has to stay here until I get. Officer Estrada initially asserts that Mr. Shakan is detained. But when asked if he is free to leave, he replies that Mr. Shakan can go without his vehicle. This conflicting statement creates a potentially perplexing situation where Mr. Shakan could unintentionally break the law if he decides to leave, subsequently giving the officers a basis to potentially arrest him. And I have, right now, you are legally detained at this time for what? For speeding. And I think as though it's further now going into an investigation further about something that possibly could be in your vehicle. Yeah, so I mean, if the canine does show up and it does hit, I'm just going to be straight up with you. If it does do an indicator that something may be in it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to seize your vehicle, I'm going to no. conduct a search warrant, and then I cannot go into your vehicle until that search warrant is approved by the judge. So that's, that's where we're at. It's imperative to note the officer's repeated assertion that Mr. Shakan is being detained on the grounds of speeding, though this is standard procedure during a traffic stop. Individuals can only be legally detained for a specific duration. It's stated that during a traffic stop, police can only detain the occupants of the vehicle for the time necessary to issue a ticket and check the driver's license and registration. Now the fact that the officer has completely stopped writing the citation, using the excuse of explaining the law to young Mr. Shawkin, wasting a total of 15 minutes so far, leads us to confidently assert that this constitutes a violation of the law, something the officer is supposed to uphold. Continuing with the ordeal, the officer tries to apply additional pressure on Mr. Shaken by mentioning that if the K-9 unit detects anything in his vehicle, it will be seized, impounded, and subjected to an extensive search. This tactic might be an effort to coerce Mr. Shaken into consenting to a vehicle search verbally, but he remains firm in asserting his rights. And like I said, you have your rights. Believe me, you have your rights. rights. You, have you are protected. Because you, you keep you keep trying to reach for that pocket. Is it okay if I touch you down real quick? Just make sure you have nothing on you. Because yeah, you, you keep reaching for that pocket. Turn around for me. 
I don't know why it's just on my Facebook, you, you keep putting because, your hands because, in your pocket. Because it's, it's not but nice. It's not I understand. Good. And like I said, we're not violating anything. Everything is being recorded. So just understand that, okay? okay? And we're doing everything by what the New Mexico state law requires us to do and allows us to do, okay? So as far as... You want to put that down there. As far as I understand... Can you pockets for me, please? As far as what we're... As observed in the video, Officer Sal proceeds with conducting a pat-down on Mr. Shockin under the belief that he may be carrying something in his pockets. Legally, this action falls under what is known as a Terry Frisk, a limited search for weapons, typically of the outer clothing but also including areas that may be within the suspect's control and pose a danger to the officer or agent. Many law enforcement agencies instruct officers to conduct a pat-down of the suspect's outer clothing as part of the frisk procedure. However, it's important to note that, according to the Terry Frisk rules, Officer Cito could not lawfully request Mr. Chacon to empty his pockets, as this action is not part of the Terry Frisk procedure. This violation implies that even if anything were discovered on Mr. Chacon, it would not be admissible in court, in addition to constituting a breach of his Fourth Amendment rights. Furthermore, this detention was prolonged beyond what would be deemed reasonable, essentially rendering the traffic stop void. So we uh, measured this vehicle speed at 80 in a 55, uh, pulled him over. Like I said, he was nervous and stuff, started seeing a little bit more indicators that he was giving us. Um, we asked for consent, he denied, and so just with the indicators that we have and seen, that's where we're trying to go further. Okay. Um, so if you want to talk to him, see. Are you guys done with it for now? Yeah, we're done. Uh, like I said, I'm on, I'm on Stone Garden. Uh, we're just trying to see what, what, what questions you have for him or whatever. How you doing? Good, good. Um, Agent, I'll say you guys work until I get the next day. Good, great. Good, good. All right, uh, Vanessa, be here. Uh, nope. And order if you need to advocate I would say no, but what would be the would be any room for that? I don't have I don't have anything, but like I wanna say no. But would it there be like I want to say no consent, but okay. pull over if these are like a link follow-up. Something that goes afterwards, yeah, like what happens if I yeah, say no? Like a repercussion. No, no, you're, you're free to say no. But, but, but would I be able to take my car and go home? That's what these guys, but they, they requested. But they requested, so okay, so that's, so, so it'll be the same. Okay, okay, so this is what's going to happen. Okay, okay. okay. I'm going to run the outside of the vehicle with my own. Okay, okay. 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 Yeah. Um, Oh, so it's just controlled substances. Right. How about Like, is this thing yeah. is always just what we're more interested in, man, is uh, I, any I, narcotics or any I, uh, people, sorry. you know. But I, uh, I believe me, consent. we've, yeah, we uh, give me consent now, yes, sir. The inside and the outside, not the inside, okay. What do you mean? This is for right? So it's, it's 100 percent up to you, man. That uh, you, he, it's he, the same thing, you give him consent to go inside or do the air stuff, but, but he, he said he said it was gonna be a run out outside. Yeah, and that's, if you deny him consent to go inside the vehicle, then he's going to do just the outside yeah. with his with his canine, and then we'll go from there. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, if you if you have any, like I said, if you have a gun in there, 
yeah, yeah, it's just it's just that. normal for people to say, hey, yeah. if you do have a firearm, you don't necessarily have to tell us. But I mean, I, you know, just for nowadays with the people being not you know killed, officers being killed, yeah, people being I, killed, I, yeah. it's an ugly place out here. Yeah, so, so I, yeah, I for officer safety, your safety, we want to make sure that everybody goes home safe. So that's. So we're uh, we're doing that. Don't pet the dog. Yeah, I just yeah, we don't we don't even pet the dog. <laughs> but if you want to just monitor traffic for him, bro, just uh, before after the dog passes. Yeah, we can we can move up. But it's just like I said, I don't know. I I don't know if it what the indicators are because I'm not a handler. So we can stand right here. I'll stand right here with you. That's what happens. That'd be kind of cool too. <laughs> Yeah, so it's gonna do its thing. He's gonna do a search. That's that's what it's doing here. It's so cute. Yeah. So uh, you follow me. The dog hit on the passenger side. On the passenger side. Yes, sir. So okay. Let's. Well, let's so I mean, thing is always. I don't know what what the what the be, so I don't know what to say. Okay, and you're responsible for everything inside that vehicle. That's your vehicle, okay. correct? Yes. Okay. So the thing is always, since it is indicating that there is something could inside. I, can I like have them go in there and search it now? Or as far is it, as, or is it, or do no, I have to, go I have to we're going to have to stop and get a search warrant. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. So that's the thing. Yeah. Now that we have probable cause with the canine, now we can go further. Yeah. Okay. So now we're going to tease your vehicle and we'll go from there. Like okay. I said, can you're free to leave. Can but I go, Kang? Okay. Is it going to take long if, if. How long it's it gonna search? take time, brother. It's probably yeah. gonna take two or three hours, man. That's that's just straight hours? up on it. Yeah, that's just we gotta type up the warrant. I just we gotta get them. Oh, okay, I, I get that, brother. Can like I, I said, can, you're can, free. I wait, can I wait with y'all and just do this? And then maybe I, I can't I, do it on the side of the road. I, I have to I take it to a secure place down. You midnight. could definitely come with us. Yeah, you could definitely come with us. And um, once we do the type up the search warrant, get it approved by the judge and everything like that, then we'll go further. But like I said, man, it's just. If there's something in there, you could have just been honest with us and you're going to yeah, save the yeah, whole yeah. trip, you know, but... I, I wouldn't know if there's even anything in there, honestly. Approximate just... time, you could probably be leaving here by 1 a.m. Mr. Shakan got pulled over by the Lordsburg cops and had to sit around for a whopping 55 minutes waiting for the K-9 unit to show up. When it finally did, surprise, surprise, the dog supposedly signaled, giving the cops the excuse they needed to keep hassling him even though Mr. Shaken played nice and went along with them to the station, they still seized his car and got a search warrant. But guess what? They didn't find squat. The K-9 sniffed out a marijuana vape pen, which is totally legal in New Mexico since 2021. Officer Sturr kept mentioning some federal program called Stone Garden, even though the Lordsburg cops got busted before for messing around with it. Mr. Shaken's not taking this lying down. He's looking for a lawyer to sue the pants off the Lordsburg Police Department for messing with him. No new updates on this mess yet. On October 7th, 2023, Officer DeVore from the Den Springs Police Department was on patrol duty when he noticed a vehicle ahead of him making erratic movements on the road. Following protocol, Officer DeVore pursued the vehicle with his lights flashing, signaling for a traffic stop. The driver, identified as Mr. Two, promptly complied pulling over and staying put while Officer DeVore waited for backup before approaching. Hey, sir, you do me a favor, step to the front of my uniform? Yeah. Do me a favor, stand in front of my unit, please? Uh, I can stand where I want. You can tell me what you pull me over for. Okay, so for my safety, I want you to stay in front of my unit. And for auditor safety, I would like for you to tell me why you stopped me. Uh, Who are you? I, I will in just Who a second. Hey man, stand in front of my unit. I can stand where I want, dude. Right off the bat, the officer tries to establish dominance in an overly aggressive manner, needlessly inflaming the situation. Moreover, he issues a series of unlawful commands to the driver, insisting that he stand exactly where instructed, even if it's just a mere two feet away from his current position. Furthermore, the framework laid out in People v. Dior 
delineates a progressive spectrum for police-civilian engagements, requiring heightened justification for more invasive interactions. Mere non-compliance with an officer's positional orders, absent any other valid reasons, fails to meet the threshold for punitive action or further escalation. Not on my traffic problem? stop. Not on my traffic stop. What do you want? What did you pull me over? Do me a favor. You can put the cell phone down. No, I can hold my cell phone. When it interferes with a... It, it's not interfering. Recording. It Turner it versus is. Driver says it is not interfering. Louisiana, Texas, and Mississippi, as Turner versus Driver, have every right to film you. In just the initial exchange between the officer and the driver, it's evident how tyrannical the officer truly is. The officer ordered Mr. Two to put his phone down, implying he couldn't record. This is a clear attempt to violate Mr. Two's First Amendment rights, which grant him the right to record the police. It's crucial to note that Mr. Two referenced the landmark case of Turner v. Driver, which established the constitutional right of individuals to record law enforcement officers. This decision by the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals in 2017 affirmed that such actions are protected under the First Amendment, providing citizens with the assurance that they can legally document police activity. Did you pull me over? So the reason why I stopped, I noticed you were hearing back and forth. Oh, don't people. give me that. It's all on dash cam. So do you want don't me to give finish? Me that shit. It's all do you on want dash me cam. to tell you, or are you going to let me explain, or are you going to keep bumping your gun? I'm going to keep bumping my guns because I've ever got your ID on you. What do I need my ID for? What law did I break? Improper, what law did I break? Improper lanes. Improper lanes. I was in my lane. I got dash cam to prove it. I never broke line either side. You don't have to break line. At this juncture, the officer has made a false accusation against Mr. Two regarding improper lane usage, which seems to be refutable by the dash cam footage from the vehicle. What's more troubling is the officer's assertion that swerving within a lane can lead to a citation for improper lane usage, even if the vehicle doesn't cross lane lines. This contradicts Louisiana State Legislature, specifically Section 79, which dictates that when a roadway is divided into clearly marked lanes, vehicles must stay within a single lane unless changing lanes safely. Mere swerving within a lane doesn't constitute improper lane usage according to these regulations, thus making the traffic stop entirely unlawful. Consequently, Mr. Two isn't legally detained and isn't required to provide identification. Let's bear this in mind as we continue reviewing the body cam footage. What do you mean I have to break line? I didn't. Statute do, I didn't says do veering back and forth. Is it veering lane back? Lane. I was not veering back and forth. This ain't the courtroom. I see a driver's license. This is, this is not the courtroom. Nope. This Can is I not the courtroom. So, 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 so you're pulling me over, saying that what? I'm Can drunk. I see your driver's license. You're saying that I'm drunk. I'm not. Are you okay. having a medical episode? Are you distracted? Are you tired? Have you been driving for a long time? I don't answer questions. How about that? Take what's the driver's license, please. Okay. Who are you, Dennis Reeves? Who are you, Dennis Reeves? What's your name and badge number? I told you my name is Officer DeVore, Dennis Springs Police Department. Okay, and you're going to be one of the slow ones that just messed up. Now, what right, else do you want? This is harassment. Y'all are harassing me because of who I am. I don't know who you are. Well, I'm telling you, I am your worst nightmare at this point. I'm going to tell you something. I don't care what you got to say. If you say that again, I'm going to take that as a threat. It's called freedom of speech. I will take that as a threat and act what? accordingly. How? Mr. Tulo went along with the cop's request for ID, even though the cop had no valid reason to ask for it, making the demand unconstitutional. The Louisiana law says cops can ask for ID if they reasonably suspect someone of committing a crime, but that wasn't the case here. Plus, the cop tried to scare Mr. Tulo by telling him not to accuse anyone, which could violate his right to free speech under the First Amendment. The Supreme Court ruled in the city of Houston v. Hill case in 1987 that cops can't arrest you just for talking back to them. This decision made it clear that our right to speak freely, even when it involves criticizing the police, is protected by the Constitution. I'm telling you. Look at this. Oh man, look. You're gonna let this fool fucking do this stupid this song, Jay. Really? You know I don't do nothing. I don't break laws. You know, I was just gonna let you off with a warrant, but and I'm gonna write you a ticket. So what? Improper lanes. I didn't change lanes. Bearing back and forth. I did not break line. You gonna get write a me ticket. a ticket? Write me the ticket. Go ahead. Go write me the ticket. Go on. Stand right there. Have you got any weapons on? Try I don't answer questions. And this is gonna be an illegal search. 
turn around and face my unit. Place your hands on top of you and interlace your fingers. I am recording. Oh, okay. You see this people? You see this people? You see this people? Now, spread your feet. Now it's an all for safety thing. You need to learn the law. So right now, I'm going to be law. quiet. Shut your mouth. Oh, you're messed up. Oh, I'm going to show you. So I can conduct a lawful pat frisk for weapons yes, for officer called, safety. It's called Terry versus And Ohio. I gave you three lawful commands and you sat there. You got one time. Yep, and you just messed up. Ooh. Nice, interesting weapon. I don't have any questions. I'm not asking you no questions. You asked me about You got the right to remain silent. Use it. Be quiet. I Then use it. You threatening me again? You, you, are you gonna get a, you're gonna get a written? They got the written up. <laughs> you don't even know. You're gonna get a complaint form. Good. It's gonna go on your jacket. Come on with it. It's gonna get it. Okay, that ain't too much. Yep. Put the phone down, man. You don't have to. Oh, I don't have to? No, you don't. Uh, statute doesn't state that. What does the statute state for? Put the phone down. We'll be writing my ticket for, I guess, driving straight. Don't retaliate. So is this one law? Yeah. Yeah. I know law better than you do. Nothing you do all right, baby. Have you all dealt with him before? I dealt a couple times, see. But I don't, I don't really, you don't really cause any problems. Him and Payne get into it a lot. They really don't like uh, walking with you that much. Well, but, it's up to you doing right too. Well, so I dealt with the cell phone thing when it interferes with investigation. <laughs> It just in general, he's still allowed to report and tell them. But within a certain distance of a law enforcement officer, they haven't conducted. proved that yet. They, they're trying to get that approved. I don't think it, it's in Louisiana. It must, it's in a different couple of states. I think Florida approved it first. But yeah, I it's approved here. We can one I dealt with. We have to have double check on them. I'm going to do that right now. Sergeant Payne, for check this one. Sergeant Payne, make sure you Be quiet. If you step any closer to me, stand right over there. If you step one more foot closer to my unit, I'm going to take it as a threat and I'm going to act accordingly. I'm trying. I'm trying. Officer Dort gets a heads up from another officer to be careful and not give out tickets because it could lead to legal trouble. This shows that Officer Dort doesn't know the law well, making us wonder how much we can trust the police. Things get worse when Officer Dort keeps referring to laws that don't actually exist. When he tries to look up the laws online, he finds out that Governor John Bell Edwards vetoed a bill that would have made it a crime to approach police officers within 25 feet while they're on duty in public places, saying it could violate people's First Amendment rights. The ACLU of Louisiana, which pushed for the bill to be vetoed, praised the governor's decision saying it's important to have bystanders and videos to hold police accountable for their actions. Dispatch 415, we got it back. Just negative. Well, I don't know what's driving. I'll just say, hey, yo. <laughs> Honest God, no. They got strike me down right now. I don't know what's going to drive. I'm just back up off the boat. 
I wasn't going to write him a ticket. I wasn't going to write him a ticket. Officer Dort initially didn't plan to give Mr. Tusa a ticket and didn't think he was driving drunk. But Officer DeBoard's comments might be trying to blame Mr. Tusa instead of admitting any wrongdoing. Traffic stops have to follow the Fourth Amendment, which says cops need a good reason to pull someone over. If Officer Dort didn't have a good reason, and if Mr. Tusa wasn't drunk, the stop might not have been legal. That could mean Mr. Tusa could use Title 42 Section 1983 to sue for violating his rights, like if the cops messed up. Off for persons either principal accessory crime between, let's see. Also, people need for sure to get here. That's not the dumb question. So, I noticed because he, this is how that walk, the cops got in trouble. Because they do have dash cameras. Well, yeah. So, I noticed he, he veered to the, the uh, center lane to travel right before he crossed over the... Uh, the intersection, but after that, he didn't get out. See, I dealt with this in Point Capete, yeah. and <clears throat> when when they doing when the, when all that's going on, when it interferes with a law enforcement investigation, take the phone, turn it off. Ain't been written up or tried to been sued before. It's been doing this 12 years, man. Not the first time that it's happened. Whenever an environment more clear lane track in addition but to. All that the tweet going is how the back don't feed until it gets some points. That's what the views gonna get, that's what the camera wants. I just don't want him to keep walking towards my unit because for me that's an officer safety yeah. thing. And I can articulate that all day in court, and he won't beat that. In the conversation between the officers, it becomes clear that Officer Dort is displaying unethical behavior by suggesting he could use the excuse of officer safety to justify any further actions he takes against the driver, exploiting the ambiguous area within the law to protect those actions from legal review. The exchange also highlights the other officer's attempts to persuade Officer Dort and calm down his approach as this officer also seems to agree that the stop lacks legitimate grounds. In essence, we've just witnessed an officer attempting to fabricate a valid excuse to unlawfully continue an illegal detainment. Well, if, if I don't write him a ticket, then... If I don't write him a ticket... No, it, it is something you need to take. You got all the pressure all day, every day. But, he is one of those shit. It just needs to eat away from you. You just have to not let it get to you. Or... Uh, my main concern is also for safety. Right hey, I'll tell you on that. But... <clears throat> Well, I didn't have to tell him three times. <laughs> it's up to you if you want to write what is what it is. <sighs> well, am I going to deal with any backlash if I don't? That, uh, no, nah, all the discretion is it. Oh, so here's the thing. <clears throat> So I don't have a dash cam. And now, is it going to show him veering? Probably not. The way his dash cam is positioned, because I see it right here, it's not going to show him veering. It's not going to show. As heard through the body cam audio, Officer Dorr quite literally admits that there's absolutely no proof that Mr. Two swerved lanes. Isn't this something he should have considered beforehand? And either way, he knows all too well that this citation will get thrown right out when taken to court. His patrol car has no dash cam and he somehow blames the positioning of Mr. Two's dash cam, claiming that it's the reason why it definitely didn't capture the swerving either, which makes no sense. It's clear as day that Officer Dorr has landed himself in a situation he can't escape. It's up to you if you want to write them. If not, it is what it is. 
at the end of the day, we got also discretion. You want to say it ain't worth the headache. Or if you want to just hit him with the ticket, you can see him bearing your word against us, we're going to go to court. Anyway, they're going all over YouTube, so. <laughs> I'm just trying to make you dial back, though. Mm -hmm. Don't I feed know. into it. Sure and I'm not trying to keep trying. I don't want to correct you on his camera because then it doesn't want to be into his drugs. Alright, well. <sighs> this thing's cold for and all that. Don't get your knife till you pull off. I'm going to cut you a break tonight. Okay? Give me a break tonight. I'm going to cut you a break. Oh, Can I give your driver's license back? Yeah, my license. Okay. Hold on. Mr. How, how you pronounce your last name? I don't answer questions. How you pronounce your last I don't name? Answer name? To Tulos? It's Greek. I'm giving you that much. Well, I just want to be respectful. Tulos? Respectful? You pulled me over for no reason just now. I don't pull people over for no oh. reason. Oh. So, next time we have this conversation, it'll be some paper. It'll be some Next time we have this conversation, you're free to go. <laughs> oh, the traffic stop over. Am I free to go, officer? You're free to go? I'm free to go. <clears throat> After the troubling and unjustified incident, Mr. Tu decided to file a formal complaint against both officers. He firmly believed that the accompanying officer should have intervened to stop any unlawful behavior by the first officer and reported such misconduct. Mr. Tu's assertions resonated with the principles delineated in the Law Enforcement Code of Ethics, which emphasized the obligation of law enforcement personnel to confront and report illegal and unethical behavior among their colleagues. As of the time of this recording, it remains uncertain whether the complaint ruled in Mr. Two's favor. Thanks for watching. If you found these cases of corrupt cops getting fired and immediately sued as shocking as we did, give us a thumbs up and share this video with others. Don't forget to leave a comment with your thoughts and subscribe to US Corrupt Cops for more updates on police misconduct and accountability. See you next time.